Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek Bootcamp. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and today we're going to be talking about classes and objects. So sit back and download a cup of knowledge because SE Geek begins now. Okay, so this is the last episode in this series. Uh, you know, just very basic tutorials of getting you into programming. And I'm going to talk about object-oriented programming. Um, this one traditionally has been, uh, is harder to explain because it's, uh, it's very abstract. And something I haven't really talked a lot about before is the idea of abstraction. And functions... Uh, which uh, are a way of actually abstracting a particular uh, set of functionality away so that you don't really have to know uh, how the function works. You just have to know, uh, you know what parameters you need to put into it and you know basically what you're going to get out of it in order to use it. You don't really have to know what the inner workings on of it are, which is the idea of abstraction. Now, object-oriented ta uh, programming takes that to another level. Now, we have object-oriented programming, which sometimes you'll see the acronym, uh, acronym OOP, uh, O-O-P. Uh, some people, you know, if they're particularly into functional programming, might think that this is more like OOPS. Uh, but, you know, that's not, not me in particular, but... Uh, you know, there there are those people who you know go extreme on that and don't like object-oriented programming, which is fair enough. Uh, and as I said, uh, you know, it's been hard for people to explain what ob explain object-oriented programming because it is very abstract and it doesn't fit into um, a mathematical construct like much of uh, programming does. So one of the ways that I kind of come up, came up with uh, trying to explain it, since we're in Groovy, which uses some of the uh, Java way of doing uh, things, is we have these things called classes. Now classes uh, are like factories that produce instance uh, instances, which are you know the actual objects that you can actually use and manipulate in a program. So classes, uh, you know, define like uh, basically a template of, uh, you know, what it is, the, the, uh, the instance that you're uh, actually building uh, with the class. So this is uh, actually probably, you know, in, in a way is actually kind of a bad example or bad explanation because there are, uh, you know, f way ways of setting up a class to make it a, quote, factory. Um, but you know, I'm I'm using this just as a metaphor for what it's doing. So uh, for our example, we have a class called Ball, and basically, this is you know our our little factory uh, template that's defined. Uh, so class, uh, let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see more of this. Um, we have, you know, a block here, which, you know, classes are defined within a block. And within that block, we define a bunch of variables. These, uh, when inside of a uh, class, they're called properties. These are properties of the class and have a scope of defined within the class structure. So, uh, you know, they are valid anywhere within this class. And... Uh, so uh, another thing we have, the next thing we have here, which is uh, a function, but it, uh, functions within classes are usually called methods. And this is uh, a special method called the constructor, uh, which uh, has the same name as the class. And uh, we have it taking a couple parameters and setting them. Now, one another thing to notice within this constructor was we're, we're using a uh, special uh, property called this, which refers to the actual uh, instance that's being created by this class. We haven't actually created any instances or created any objects yet, but uh, th this var um, excuse me, this variable or yeah, it's hard to say that uh, refers to the actual instance. So when we're we have these parameters type, and we also have 
you know, type here and here. So if we want to assign into this type, we use the keyword this, and then we assign the parameter into that. And same with uh, diameter. And you know that this is our constructor that constructs the instance. Uh, within Groovy, uh, it's uh, useful to note that you don't have to dis, uh, actually define a constructor like this. And I'll show you uh, one of the special things that Groovy can do for you by default. But since we are defining a, a constructor here, it overrides that default. And there are actually a lot of uh, defaults that Groovy gives you just you know, out of the box that say Java doesn't or other languages don't. Uh, and one, one of the other things it provides you uh, by default is getters and setters. Those are just dynamically created when you compile, when this is compiled or when it's run. So um, there's a, a getter and setter for type, which is just the default getter and setter because I didn't uh, actually create them here. But if I wanted to, I could create them here and maybe have uh, conditions around those. So, you know, maybe you can't actually set, uh, you know, the diameter. Maybe that's fixed or something like that. Uh, you can do stuff like that. But it, here I haven't bothered with that. So moving on. Uh, another thing we have, uh, if we have functions in the class, these, as I said, are called methods. And they usually act on the parameters uh, not the parameters, but the properties of the class. So I have an inflate uh, method here, and it sets inflated to true. So all this is just essentially our template for an instance that we make with the ball class. So in order to do that, we have this over here where we're having we have a variable, and we use the new keyword, and we call the constructor ball, and we pass in the type and uh, the diameter which goes in here and that creates a new instance for us and now we can actually use that instance and I talked about the getters and setters so I'm using the getters here obviously so well I shouldn't say obviously but if I run this actually let's uh, give us some more room and scroll down so uh, the type basketball diameter 9 um, and let's see, and uh, basically inflated is false. And okay, so moving on from that, I can call a method on ball. And so we'll inflate the ball per se, uh, per se. And if we check inflated after that, we'll see inflated is now true. So, you know, that gives us one basic uh you know, that gives us a ball that we can you know, do stuff with. And we can create as many of these objects as we want. And we can actually pass objects around. We can pass, uh, you know, objects to functions. We can pass some uh, objects to other objects. Uh, kind of similar to the, similar but very different from the idea of functional programming that I was talking about uh earlier with uh, closures but you know some similar ideas going on here but little different uh, because these are usually uh, very well defined whereas uh, you know when you pass around closures they're not actually a defined object they're just a function you're passing around so we're going to do a little bit more here and as I said uh, Groovy by default will create the actual constructor so we can get rid of this and instead use the um, constructor that Groovy has uh, that Groovy does by default Groovy will actually generate a bunch of constructors for you and you can uh, pass in something like this which you know looks very much like a map where we you know use the constructor and we tell it we want to set the type to base the diameter 3 and inflate it to true so um, obviously, you would never have an inflated uh, baseball, but uh, you know, bad example for what I'm trying to put forth here. But you know, I, when I sh when I run this, you know, uh, we get uh, from the type base diameter three and inflated true. So this is just a very uh, 
you know, just just a very cursory way of uh, showing you uh, object-oriented programming. Now, there's a lot more depth in here uh, that I haven't talked about. Uh, I'm just going to mention some of those ideas. Like, if you want to get more into programming, you you know, obviously you'll have to take, uh, you know, you, or you, you not necessarily have to take, but you'll have to read more or take a course or something like that. But uh, the thing with object-oriented programming that makes it somewhat uh, powerful is the idea of inheritance. So I can uh, specify a ball class. I could also specify a uh, basketball class, which... Uh, would uh, you know have like different parameters, but it can inherit like all the parameters that you know are in here. Now uh, within Java and uh, Groovy, it has something called single inheritance. So uh, you know one class can only inherit from another. Uh, we also uh, there's also the idea of abstract classes where um, basically you can specify a class and specify methods that aren't implemented yet and when you actually you know extend that class which is how you use the in inheritance uh so we could you know just to show you uh like the the syntax would be extends you know some other class you know that's how you would have it extend something is you'd specify the class here and you'd say extends that class, and when you actually implement it, uh, you know if there was if you were basing this on an abstract class, say like uh, the abstract class specified an inflate uh, method, but didn't actually provide a um, an actual uh, you know uh, implementation. When you make the non-abstract uh, version of it, you would actually have to implement that method. Uh, now, explaining why that's important becomes a little bit more complex, uh, and I don't really want to go too much into depth with that right now. A as I said before, explaining object-oriented programming becomes a little bit more difficult because of the idea of abstraction. A lot of things become very abstract, to say the least. Um, let's see. Another uh, idea that's that's very important important you know actually with this idea of uh, extending things is the idea of polymorphism, which is the the worst thing I, I could ever think of to call uh, you know something in programming because it sounds so complex and there's about I think there's like three or four different meanings to the word depending on what you're doing in programming. But that's another thing that you might want to look into if you're looking into uh, object-oriented programming. Uh, one of the ways of doing this is where you have uh, the inheritance and you specify like uh, a type, you know, a class. And, uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, the extended classes that fall under that. You can just specify like the, like the base type and everything that falls under that, if you call like a method that's, you know, on a particular class, uh, uh, on a particular type that falls under that, it would, you know, if the the programming uh, knowledge can or programming uh, code can figure out which type you're actually going to, and that's that's way more complicated than I should even start talking about here. Um, yeah. So in any ca case, if you want to learn more about uh, or object-oriented programming, I, I would read up on it a lot more uh, in a different context than uh, this. But f from, for now, what I'm going to say, just to, to leave you with this, is these tutorials gave you a very uh, basic, just, you know, cursory uh, overview of some of the, you know, basic ideas in programming and just some basic knowledge so that you can start to play with these, uh, make functions, uh, you know, call them, see what they do, and manipulate them, and uh, just to you know, dip your toe in the water of programming so you can learn more. Uh, from my perspective, uh, in pr you know, everyone should be able to learn how to code, but not everyone is necessarily going to be 
become a programmer. Learning to code and being able to write scripts, you know, for basic automation is actually a very valuable skill in a lot of different fields. Uh, but being a programmer or, or a you know developer slash software engineer uh, goes a lot deeper into that, and you'd have to you know understand a lot more than you know what I've laid out here. Uh, and you know, as I said before, uh, these uh, tutorials are n in no way uh, a substitute for um, an actual education in programming. They're they're basically just a you know starter to get you interested in in it, uh, hopefully, and just see what you can do just on a very basic level. So what I'd say is, you know, take what you've learned here, uh, play with it, and go out there and, you know, read more about it, uh, you know, watch more videos, and just learn more. And, you know, the more you play with these things, uh, the easier it gets, and, you know, the better you get at it. So that's pretty much all for this uh, set of tutorials. Um, maybe see you in other tutorials.